What is going down, tech family? I know this one's a little bit later than usual, but for new people joining in, we're going to be taking a look at the 460 driver series, and this one introducing the new game ready driver for 461.09. My name is Mac here with the MacGyver 7 channel. Today, we'll be looking at the game ready driver from NVIDIA. So let's go ahead and slam into some benchmarks. We'll slam into some nice patch notes and see the well rounded world of what's going down. Now, for as far as what's going to happen when you do install this one thing, I did notice is that your graphics card may run a little bit hot than normal so you want to boost the fan up just a little bit one thing i did notice from the last driver to this driver it runs a tad bit hot but it can be optimal in certain performances so let's go ahead and take a look for starters, we're going to look at just some brief benchmarks before we go into the patch notes. Now, you can see right over here at Port Royale, where we're utilizing our tensor cores. The top portion is going to be your hardware accelerator on for Windows, and your driver to driver is right to left. New one being on the right, the 461.09, and the 460.09. 89 on the left so 461 versus 460 looking at those situations you can see that there are some differences the hardware accelerator on even though there is no percentage drops will give you a nice little performance boost on the older driver as looking at where there is some stability you can have with the hardware accelerator off if you do optimize to have some stuff like with DirectX 11 or 12 that we'll get into in a brief second but let's go ahead and at the very moment briefly go into what the patch notes have changed there's a lot of stuff that they have on the Vic list but there is some stuff that they actually fixed on that list as well now for starters and everyone new these will be linked down below so you'll have your direct nvidia notes but where we're going to be going is right over here uh nvidia's lovely situation of reddit gotta love it reddit is just a really great situation but quake 2 and the rtx variety you're going to be getting an update for the uh 140 and that's going to enable some support for some vulcan ray tracing um that's going to be really great you can expand your portion of gameplay awesome in the path tracing glory so just ray and tracing everywhere have fun with that leave a comment if you've definitely enjoyed that and if it looks pretty cool looking on past that for as far as the added security updates that happen to be with the components and one of the core things that i did notice is that the windows ecosystem has been nice to us we've literally had about almost about two weeks to three weeks with nothing happening they haven't updated i've seen obs update and it's running really smooth windows don't screw this up please i swear if i get an amd update and i do some freaking benchmarks and they go off the charts i'm gonna be like it's all windows but usually it is it's usually some damn security update but anyways let's go back to where we were as you can kind of see the situation will point of the added security driver going down to the game ready driver fixes because these are the more important things now these aren't going to have some gpu you know types that are going to be standing out the ti in general um, but the game ready experience the fps counter admit an issue for the overlay and they basically on the windows mail and the calendar and the application so they have now fixed that for as far as those errors on top of that for the gtx series in the 750 the blue screen crash should now have a expected kernel rather than the trap of an unexpected one that may occur or used to occur looking at the 1080 series as we go into the tie as they like to say it the titanium you can see the desktop screens may flicker no more and the system freezes and the screens display a solid color for the first time maybe hmm, i don't know i've never had the 1080 i only had the 7d which was not too bad like gtx uh, 1070 ti mini was actually an amazing card that i picked up i still love that thing it just it's a heat generator that's for sure uh looking at past that portion of where the hdr comes into the um black levels incorrectly portions for the noticeable lg oled tvs now are a little bit more balanced some notebooks come into it Lavio and their Y740 in the notebook displays and the corruption after waking up from a sleep mode. And then you have your blue screen. Then situations that may occur when resuming sleep mode when there's three 4K monitors. Extremely rare, but extremely epically awesome. Uh, sadly enough, that's uh, something hopefully they do not have to deal with. And if you are still dealing with some stuff after the post install, make sure you're doing a DDU. I usually recommend those or clean installs, which you can do directly from the install platform from NVIDIA, but I would recommend the DDU. And if that fails at that point in time, I would revert back to a nice safe driver. But this one's seeming kind of pretty decent for as far as the DirectX 11 and 12, which we'll get into in a split second. Now, looking at game specific, that there came into some type that have basically been optimized you can see that the 30 series as we push past that some games have been crashing they have very 
bleakly given us a great, I guess, glimpse. Not really. Um, but on top of that, for as far as the X4 foundation, on top of the Vulcan portion of the HUD in game when in broken. Um, Batman Arkham Knight comes down to the crash for as far as when the smoke is enabled, Detroit become human, where the game is randomly crashing, and then you have the Steam VR games that shuddered and lagged occurring during launch. G-Sync inside of the Ampere portion of the terrain architecture is experiencing power issues, consuming in idle for as far as the system and uncertain refresh rate for g-sync monitors now for as far as youtube you can see that there's some shutters still scrolling down on the top of the page and the notebook comes down to the portions of the high refresh rate and the display of randomly dropping from 60 hertz down during gameplay not a situation you want if you have an fps count while you're playing some fps games for as far as what's going down for workarounds there are some g-sync issues that vulcan has presented in performance and dropping down for as far as the g-syncs when switching into the full screen mode there are some stuff that will go into an in-game setting error the workaround to that is disable your g-sync on top of that the 3070 series in the clone mode when the resolution comes down to two well, basically 2k at 140 hertz the performance stat will come down to stuck in maximum performance on top of that for as far as the nvidia terrain or later in the situation hint hint they go down to the movie portions of windows in the player and 4k full resolution now still being an issue also on top of the hdr portions of 2k um, these are expanded portions but let's go ahead and see what we can jump into with some benchmarks that is pretty much our notes we'll have some links down below you can take advantage of to install these i would definitely say that this is a nice driver even for like my 10 and 20 series of nvidia cards so but let's go ahead and look at DirectX 11 let's go ahead and start it off and work our way up to DirectX 12 since we've already covered port royale this is why I think this is a good driver to install for people that are utilizing DirectX 11 and just using 1080p gaming on your NVIDIA cards. They're going to come out really decently. If you look at process scale, you're not going to see a drop until you look at where the old driver was with the hardware accelerator off, where it literally is almost 2,000 points of just reduction. Now, for as far as the highest scoring one, the hardware accelerator on pretty much beats it. Now, if we look at the more extreme testing on Firestrike Extreme and Ultra, as we get close to 4K followed right after those tests, we can see some different results. Results. Now, though all the testing will be pretty much close when it comes down to the percentile for 88%, you can see that there actually is a nice increase with the older driver for as far as heavy 1080p gaming with a lot of portionable add ons into your settings. 4K leans exactly the same way when you look at what's going down for as far as the percentage locks that we can see that occur during. DirectX 11, but how does it look during DirectX 12? Question we should all be looking at platform to platform, which is accepted directly from the game developers. So I think we will actually see some kind of cool stuff in certain areas. Now DirectX 12 is very confusing. Because when you look at what ends up happening here, the hardware accelerator on tanks last driver, it excels this driver. It semi tanks uh, with this driver, but it's actually kind of nice when you look at it compared to the last driver where it excels over where the hardware accelerator should be excelling. I mean, that's its job, it's in the title. But looking at 4K, let's go ahead and take a look and peek into that world and see how that's working on DirectX 12. And this is where it gets funny. The old driver completely kicks butt in 4K in DirectX 12. Now, percentage-wise, again, you're not going to see that much for the increasement, but looking at the graphic scores for as far as where we're going to see the most performance, it's going to come out of the older driver with the hardware accelerator on. Uh, now, with the newer driver, you're definitely going to get some benefit and maybe some stabilities, but again, I do think that this is because the driver is running hot. Um, I noticed at least a jump in two Celsius on my recording points for just looking at where I installed it, did a DDU, quickly flipped over. But that's pretty much it, everyone. If you're new to the network, you can always like, share, and subscribe. And who knows, maybe Jensen will hook it up with some swag in the 30 series or 40 series or something like that, since, you know, all the miners are just getting that crypto right now. You know, dollar, dollar, crypto, coin, I guess, whatever. Yeah, I, I don't really think that's a catchphrase, but that's a good way to end it. Have a nice day, everyone, and may luck find your way into your life in this beginning of a new year. Pretty sweet, right? 2021. It's in the luck term. It's 21. So come on. It's a lucky year. Let's do it. Later, everyone.